Hey, good morning, Map here. Happy New Year again. Here's another video uh, that I wanted to do um, basically on the um, year-to-date performances on the futures products, which are basically uh, derivatives of assets out uh, in the world, basically. And in my last video, I spoke about uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoins. And I think I did misstate that it was up. Bitcoin was up 44% or 43%. Uh, Bitcoin was actually up 60% for 2021. Um, I was doing some, uh, I was looking here on the internet and it did show me that. Uh, let me go back to Fizz, Biz here. And we could look at the futures. Now, I don't know why they don't update Bitcoin here. I haven't seen Bitcoin here on the futures uh, up a uh, year to date. Um, year to date. Rankings or performances because they do have futures. So I don't recall seeing them here. Um, so. Here is the one year performance on the futures products. And let me also open up here the futures watch list. Here we go. So I can uh, chime in and help you uh, know which is which. So oats were the leading uh, future for one year performance. They were up 89%. I don't trade oats. Um, oats here in the futures is probably zero. Zero um, is oats. Um, I want to say this product is probably thin. I uh, don't know what the margin is, so let's take a look here what the margin is on this product. Uh, Three thousand dollars to buy one contract. Like I said, I don't know if this product is liquid. I would have to do more research. More research. I do not trade oats, but it's something that we can research and study and look at in future videos and keep a track of it in the new year. Uh, coffee was up 76% in 2021. Um, I don't have... I, I, okay, so to trade coffee, you need to have ICE uh, access, and I don't have ICE. Uh, ICE is an exchange. Um, most of these op, uh, futures are traded on the CME or COB. I don't have access to coffee futures. You need to have access to ICE exchange. So I don't even have, maybe if you look it up here, but it, it probably won't even pull up. It won't. So I can't pull up the the futures. Um, you see how he says, like for the dollar ice futures trading is not allowed on this account. You have to pay a fee to trade those. But anyways, just wanted to let you know that coffee was the second best performing uh, asset class in futures this year. And if you wanted to trade coffee, you can probably trade it off Starbucks. If you wanted to have some correlation to coffee, uh, and Starbucks was um, up pretty big this week, in my opinion. I have to look at the chart. It looked like it was moving. I did do a broken wing butterfly on there yesterday, um, and I'm looking for it to go higher. If I don't, I keep my credit. Um, so that's coffee. <clears throat> Second one, third one is canola, 65% canola. I don't, uh, on app, canola, I don't know. No, that's another ice product. And I don't have access to canola. And it's probably very thinly traded. The next one is lumber, 
increase in lumber, which is a big headwind for home builders. Uh, here's lumber. Uh, here are the spreads, no spreads. So um, the other day I looked it up. I don't know why it's not popping up. I might have to be on my, my, uh, here are all the different months. They actually have micro. This product is very, very thinly traded and requires a ton of margin. I would not even, cannot be traded. So if you want big correlation to lumber, I would say your best bet would be WY. And they're trading at $41. I like this. It's a big inflation hedge. They own Timberland. So it's, it's a REIT that owns a lot of timber and land and stuff like that. And it's a big play for lumber. That's the way I would play lumber. Uh, the next one is gasoline, Arbob. It is a good traded product of 57%. Arbob is uh, over here, right here. Here's the gasoline futures. Uh, I think this one, it, it required, this one is heavily traded. It's got good liquidity. I think it's very, it's 8,700 a contract. So I don't trade that. Uh, I'd rather just trade uh, futures on oil itself, which you could do right here. And I currently have a position. And you could do the options in the futures. I have something out at 46 days out. The next one would be oil of 55%, which I just showed you, and then Brent up 50. Uh, net gas of 48%, then cotton of 44%, uh, soybean oil of 33%. So um, for Brent, going back to the future, so you have an idea. Brent is right here, BZ. I do not trade it. And then oil is CL. They do have a nice product that they came out with, which I do recommend, which is the micro uh, crude oil. It's very manageable, very cost effective for for small trades and smaller accounts. So I like this product and it gives you access to the crude markets. Um, natural gas, they do have several. They have this one. And they have QG. I prefer to do option spreads in UNG to play oil. But this is the United States Natural Gas Fund. So I hope that helps you. Um, soybean oil, I very lightly trade. It's very lightly thinly traded, so I don't really uh, play with that. So the S&P 500 was up. 27 percent this year that's amazing you know that's a pretty amazing with all the turmoil the corona all the things that were happening uh it's just mind-boggling nasdaq almost the same big correlation between you know nasdaq and s p 500 because s p 500 has you know apple it has facebook amazon all these big tech companies, so it has a big, you know, influence on on both of them. Up twenty six percent, copper up twenty six percent, corn twenty two. So, uh, copper and corn you can trade. Copper is very big contract and too wild for for me, which would be actually. Let me do this. Somebody calls me. It won't mess up my video. Um, copper is right here. HG is pretty big product. It's uh, 5,900. You could trade copper through FCX, which would be a good one. And I think I have a calendar spread in there right now. 
Um, oh, corn. So corn is a nice product. These these grains are nice products to train, trade. You have XC, you have soybeans and wheat right here. XC, XK. These are very small products. XW. You can either do those, and these are the big ones. Z, C, ZS, and ZW. The nice thing about Z, uh, ZS, ZW, and ZC is that, that they have options. And options always give you a higher probability trade than just doing the futures itself, in my opinion. So, those are those. Live cattle, 21% uh, up. Feeder cattle up 21%. The Euro stocks 50, 20%, wheat 20, Dow Jones industrial average 18% up, rough rice 17, lean hogs of 15, the DAX, which is the German market 15, Russell small caps up 13, orange juice up 11, the US dollar up 6%, the Nikkei up 5, soybeans up 2, Canadian dollar up 1%. The British pound down 1%, two-year note down 1.29%, cocoa 246, CHF, I don't know what CHF is, I'd have to look that up. Gold, which this is mind-boggling, with all the inflation, I'm going to make a call here now, I'm going to say that gold and silver are going to be in the top of this chart for 2022. You're going to see these most of the metals are on the bottom of this chart. I t I say that these are going to be on the top in 2022. That's just my opinion. So gold down 3%. Uh, then the, the uh, five-year note down 4%. 10-year note down 5%. Soybean meal down 6 Euro down 7 30-year bond 7% down. Japanese um, yen down 10 percent platinum down 10 percent silver down 11.57 percent the vix down 17 percent and palladium down 22 percent i really don't get you know i have this discussion with a lot of traders in chat rooms and stuff and they argue with me that gold and silver are wasting assets um that doesn't f i mean i i can't comprehend that for me I think these metals are essential, not only as for uh, protection against inflation and the central bankers printing money out of thin air. Um, gold and silver have always been seen as money for ages, and it's God's money. It's in the Bible. It's It's been around forever. Um, it's fungible. It doesn't go bad. You can hold in your hand. It's You can trade. Uh, with 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 people uh barter um and at, without silver and gold i wouldn't be able to do this video on youtube this iphone has silver has gold so for 2022 i think gold and silver will outperform i think the miners will outperform and i think that's where you need to allocate some of your funds into uh these metals and these miners uh, you can, so that's enough for performances of the futures for, for 2021. I just wanted to bring you, bring it to your eyes and your attention. So when you're looking at, um, in 2022, you know what was going on in 21 and, and kind of, uh, invest, uh, accordingly. So GDX and GDXJ are two of the minor ETFs that are highly liquid and tradable and have options so i hope this little uh, recap of 2021 on the futures market was eye-opening and educational for you um chime in if any questions i don't like i said i don't have access to ice those are thin thinly traded markets if you want to learn more about that you can always come here to bar chart and hit the futures and then you have a full list of everything here uh full list of all the markets 
And you can click on, uh, for example, softs, which are softs are major, mainly uh, the the um, the ice markets. But I really don't get into trading those. Uh, if you go here, softs, you can see them here. Uh, I'm not saying that they're not liquid. I'm just not, you know, I haven't been engaged in these. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I should dabble with these, but I haven't. But like, you know, here's the orange juice, the lumber, cocoa, sugar, coffee, cotton, etc. So I hope it was educational. I hope you enjoyed it. Share it, like it, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. I'll do some, some uh, videos on some of the trades that I put in place uh, this week. I, I, I have a vacation this week. So, I mean, this week was slower. The last week of the year was not that busy trading. But I did put trades on, so I'll do videos and elaborate on the different option strategies that I put in place in my uh, portfolios um, as educational on the different strategies uh, and the uh, cap capital efficiencies of the trades. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys can pick up on that. Take care. Bye-bye.